In this video, we're going to be talking about all the technologies that I use to code the Void Pet app and talk about why I chose not to use a backend server, even though that lets people cheat in the game. Welcome to Avoid Logged Index 8. This is a series where I share the behind the scenes look into the development and business process of building a billion dollar unicorn company called Void Pet. So I chose between two frameworks to build the app, React Native or Unity, because I sure as heck was not going to build two apps natively. And for me, it came down to whether I could get away with building the entire thing in React Native. And the answer was yes. I saw that the game was simple enough that I went ahead and went with this because building out the rest of the app besides the game, like all the UI menus and stuff, is a lot easier in React Native than it is in Unity. We noticed a little wiggle that the pets do. They are animated. And that was the one thing that I wasn't sure if React Native could handle. It turns out it can kind of handle it up to about three pets on most devices animates quite smoothly. And then if you go too much past that, it gets a little bit jank, but I'm gonna be going over how exactly they did the animations in the next video. I paired the React Native with the Expo framework. In the past, it used to be a lot more ifs and buts on whether you could get away with using Expo. Now, every package I installed worked flawlessly with it. It has improved in the last two years since I used it last, and I'd recommend using it in almost every React Native project you have now. It just makes your life so much easier. The tooling is so good right now for it. Okay, so how am I storing data if I don't have a backend or if I don't have a backend server? Well, I store it all on your device. And the way I do that, I made it easy on myself. I'm using a state management library called Zustand. And Zustand makes it very easy to actually update data and set data, and it will persist it to anything that you want it to. I chose to use async storage in React Native, which just stores it on your device. I would show you this, but there's like some top secret encryption stuff that I had to use. Because basically, if I'm storing it on your device, people can edit the values on their device. And there were some values that I did not want edited, so I ended up having to encrypt them when I write them to the disk. For example, I have this main store, which keeps track of the background that you have in the game. And when you unlock a new background, all I do is I call set. I subtract the amount of VM, that's our currency, and then you now have the background stored on your device. And then you can activate that and you own it for the sake. So whenever you call set, it also backs it up to the phone as well. The setup comes with a lot of benefits, one being it's super easy for me to code and sync the logic because it's all just on your device. There's also no privacy concerns because we have people journaling things and they may not want their darkest fears or whatever they're talking about being stored in a cloud, so there's none of that. And then also it works offline. So all that is beautiful. The downside of it is if I want to do multiplayer stuff later, or if I want people to log into accounts, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to have to hack into a server and connect to later on. And also if you get a new device, if you destroy the device, I'm going to have to write a export data import function, which I haven't done yet. And that's a little bit more clunky. Also in development, I have this cute little jump to feature button and that spawns more pets for me. But in the actual app, this does not exist. You just have to wait a certain amount of time and then more pets will spawn. Well, I use new date, you know, just this guy right here, to get the current time and compare whether new pets should be spawned. And because I do that, if the user changes the date in their phone, they can actually spawn more pets before I intended to let them do that. So there's a little bit of a cheating or a hack that you can kind of do this way. We decided to just leave it in the game because this is a single player game and if you decide to want to experience the game by jumping ahead in time, you're welcome to do that. But note there is one con to doing that. As soon as you set your time to like, let's say 2024, yeah, you spawn more pets, but you can't go backwards. So we save the last timestamp that we created a pet for you. You have to wait until that time is now in the past before you can do it again. When you navigate around, there's sound effects and haptics that happen when I just transition pages or click on buttons and whatnot. That's all done with Expo AV and Expo haptics. Hint, hint, Expo is great. And the logic's a little bit funky in some of the places for doing sound and playing like little sound bites. But if you read the docs and do some troubleshooting, you'll be able to figure it out. One of the cooler things that I built in this app is this menu right here. And if I tap and hold, I can actually like drag my finger over one of these and open the menu like that. The code for it is actually just a gesture detector combined by a pressable little button here. So I can either just press and, you know, tap regularly. Or if I press and hold, I can drag my thumb over like this. And this was inspired by Pokemon Go. And it's really handy. It's just like a speed, like bam. Didn't have to lift up, lift up my finger. Bam. Navigate. 
Uh, and so doing that was a little bit tricky, but reanimated is the library that I use for everything. This guy right here. And that makes animations quite nice. When you meditate or do lots of different things in the game, sometimes the text will kind of like type out like that. That used to be made with reanimated because reanimated natively changes some of these things. So it's very performant. But I ran into problems where it just kind of broke and stopped working on some devices. So I ended up changing it to just like literally a set interval here that I just do in my code. And I, you know, put some nasty logic in there to type out this text. And now it's been working great on all devices. So one thing I found is 95% of the stuff works automatically, but you're going to find some things like on that lower spectrum of Android devices is not working how you expect. And you have to go back and like re-implement things in different ways like this. Also going to show off the hardest thing I coded in this project. It's in a file called Steamer. And this crystal after you create it by doing a self-care activity will actually just float up and look very natural, which is very hard to get naturally looking. But I think the trick is to learn reanimated really and spend a lot of time transforming and playing with opacities until you kind of get something that works. Because at the end of the day, this logic is not that long, but it didn't look good at the beginning, I'll tell you that. Every single graphic you see in this game is an SVG. The pets, the plants, the backgrounds, the little dry thing underneath the plants, all of it is looks like this. This is how you do SVGs in React Native. And they come out crisp. They look beautiful. But there is one caveat to this. Out of memory error. Failed to allocate a humongous byte allocation. And notice what page it navigated to right before it crashed. Terrain menu. So if I come back here, I go to train menu, you'll notice that the train menu just has all these backgrounds. So I'm rendering like six, like not even that many, but you know, six is uh, quite a few SVGs and they all kind of look like this where there's, you know, 200 lines of code. And for some of the crappier devices out there, they just implode. Like they're looking like Silicon Valley bank and it's not pretty whatsoever. So I think I need to convert these to PNGs or JPEGs at some point. That's coming. I'm going to test that fixes it. But just note, if you go crazy with SVGs, you may see some of that in your uh, error logging. One other thing probably worth mentioning is I had to use a crap ton of recycler list views. If you're not familiar with those, that is how you make performant lists in React Native. Otherwise, it tries to render like a whole bunch of things all at once. The recycler list view does a very good job of just only showing what's on the screen and reusing a lot of code. And you'll notice this is a lot of pets. Some people could have thousands of pets that look like this and using a flat list in React Native was disgusting. It, it would load for like 10 seconds. So this is an absolute must, especially with all these heavy SVGs. Like look how many SVGs are being rendered. All right. On slow devices, it is extremely necessary. On fast devices, it just helps keep everything flowing real smooth. Like, and there's so many pages like this. My log is clunky. Look. You'll even see like, see that it like takes a millisecond for the log to come up because there's just so many pets being rendered here. And then we have plants. I don't have as many plants rendered there. You'll even see like navigating this and the pets just have to be SVGs. The reason we went with SVGs is because there is six different elements and each element has 16 different color combinations that the pet can be. So there's a whole bunch of colors. And if I didn't pass in the color to the SVG, the SVG and change it and instead we had a PNG for every pet and there's 31 pets we're looking at like 3,000 images plus and maybe at some point it's going to be more efficient to do that I don't know well actually it just gets worse as we add more colors and more pets I was mathing how bad it would be if I sort all the images on the device but probably at that point I just scrap the offline requirement and we load those remotely but I have to change how these guys are animated because right now it's all SVG based and each individual path changes. So they'll be a little tricky to figure out with images. We also do over there updates with Expo. If I press this button in production, it'll actually work and it will just load a new update of the app. Has been working super good. Expo's great with that. We have purchases in the app and for this, just like everyone else, we just have to use Apple and Google's in-app purchases and just lose 15% to 30% of our profit and it is what it is. It sucks, but that's the price of making an app. Probably worth noting, I used RevenueCat to make my life a little bit easier to do in-app subscriptions. Worked good. 
probably recommend doing it again because otherwise they're kind of a nightmare. One area I didn't want people to cheat in was the battle pass. I didn't want them to be able to just skip to like day 30 or 8 and like just collect everything. So for this, we actually just make an API call to a time server. I'm just using this free service called timeapi.io that I make a fetch call to. And this is a trusted date time that I use. Anything where I call a new date without that is untrusted and they could cheat using that and I know that. But for this, that's how I make sure you can only do one unlock a day. I think that is all the tech worth talking about. If there's anything I forgot, leave a comment below. I'll jump in and add anything that I missed. Overall, I'm really happy with all the tech that I use and would use the exact same thing for future projects.